Welcome to Take It From The Iron Woman. My name is Susanne Müller, your host and the Iron Woman. This podcast is about empowering yourself and others to make real changes in the world. You will hear from everyday, smart, sophisticated, hip people like you and me. Not everybody has to be an Iron Woman to impress the world. Together, we will learn from the sports and business leaders how you can become a more successful person as an entrepreneur or a leader. It's one step at a time, one day at a time. Take your steps now. Take your big steps now. Join me on this journey to success. Take it from the Iron Woman. We only have special guests. And today we have my friend Kate with us. Welcome, Kate. Introduce yourself. Who is Kate who's going to join us today? Hi, Suzanne. My name is Kate Edwards. I'm from Kate Edwards and Company. And we're longtime pals. And you, thankfully, helped guide me when I chose my coaching program. So I will always think of you when I think oh, of coaching. I wasn't yeah. aware of that anymore. Yeah, yeah. thank you. We're <laughs> all here to help and support each other. Where did we get to know each other? We got to know each other at a elementary school on the Upper East Side of Manhattan, mm -hmm. <laughs> where we would meet weekly for running classes and running groups. Yeah. And I remember you're a fast runner. I was always inspired. You're like, wow, she's the Oh, fast. you're so nice. <laughs> There's always someone faster than you though. You know, I was, I always felt sort of, okay. Cause there'd be these super fast people. But tell us a little bit where you're coming from. I think you have such an interesting background and people are interesting to find gems. I think you have a great <laughs> story to share. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll just start with where I'm at now. I am a consultant, an author, an executive coach, an educator, and I focus on two areas, both on customer service, customer experience, and then also on leadership. And I focus my efforts in the hospitality industry because I came from hospitality. I spent 30 years basically working in restaurants and then consulting to restaurants. I really serve that community, large, small, new restaurants, well-established restaurants, restaurants and hotels, freestanding restaurants. That's really where my experience comes from. I started, I, I like to say the old fashioned way. I needed a job in college and started <laughs> working in restaurants. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that sort of was the beginning of what I never imagined would be my path. I was a, a musician and a creative type for so many years. Restaurants was something that made me money. And then little by little, I moved up the ladder and I kept getting cooler jobs and got way more experience and gained more confidence. And finally, I ended up spending seven years at Balthazar and I started there as a cocktail waitress, moved up to manager and maitre d', which I had done in at previous jobs as well. And at that point, I was singing on the weekends, working during the week, and I realized I needed to just do one thing. That was sort of what I was craving at that point. I literally made a list of pros and cons, which mm -hmm. one's better. And I decided I would stay with restaurants. I applied to one restaurant and actually got a job at a restaurant that was brand new at the time called Per Se. That experience really sort of put me on my path. I spent two years there. I left there to run a restaurant for Jeffrey Zakarian. I'd worked for him before as well. And then I started consulting and again, focusing on helping restaurateurs really achieve their vision through the service they provide to their guests. And I've had a pretty, I'd say a lucky career in some ways. My first client was a legendary restaurant here in New York called Le Cirque. And then I've worked with places as well known as, let's say, the Essex House Hotel, the Plaza Hotel, and then other brands that are a little more up and coming like Jack's Wife Frida or Brooklyn Fair or Westville which is some like a favorite brand here in the city. I serve more local brands and I also serve companies that are across, across the country and I offer them a lot of training, coaching and advisement. That's my quick story. Oh, that sounds so cool. And I know we all have seen Anthony Bourdain's show, like the restaurant. And what was the other show, Guy from England? Gordon Ramsay. Okay. Are you the Gordon Ramsay of New York? The Kate of Gordon Ramsay? Oh, no, I'm too nice. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I'm a service person. I don't scream at people, but uh, we all admire Anthony Bourdain and how he's shined the light on sort of the reality of mm -hmm. restaurants in a way. Since then, I feel like the restaurant world has gone through a bit of an ebb and flow in terms of it was really glamorous for a time, especially mm -hmm. 
you know, when Gordon Ramsay's shows were a big thing, maybe 10, 15 years ago. And now it seems that restaurants, it's not as glamorous, but it's still, I think it, it's more about the idea of feeding people and taking care of them and also bringing a authentic artisanal product to market. I think that's what really is mm. grabbing people now, which I like because I think people were misinformed when they thought it was all glamour because it's hard work. I think you just mentioned it. It's hard work. I had a friend and she says, oh, my husband is an excellent chef. He wants to go to the culinary school. And I said to her, yeah, it might be good if he can make one or two steaks. But if you have to make, I don't know how many steaks a night, it's uh -huh. a different story. That's right. Again and again and again and again every single day. That's one of the beauty things about hospitality, though, is that every day you start from scratch. Mm -hmm. Now, for some people, that sounds like a nightmare, but that's actually one of the the beautiful things every day you start with a clean a clean plate a clean counter and then you do all your prep and then you create everything and then you invite all your guests in you serve them all and at the end of the night you clean it, it all up and go to bed and the next day you start over there's something really nice about that flow and about mm -hmm. that sort of energy around it always and tie a bow on the end of the night which i've always really liked and it's not for everybody i've seen into a kitchen or i was invited to look in a beautiful kitchen the space is so small And you have to, it's about teamwork and you have to get along with the people. I think that's amazing. And that's what we don't see. You go to those beautiful restaurants and everything looks perfect. But what is happening behind the scenes? That's right. Yeah. And, and it's a huge amount of teamwork and collaboration. And I think the best restaurants are the ones where the, what we call the front of the house or the service team and the back of the house, cooking and culinary team, when they really do understand that the other person is essential mm -hmm. to this place. It's sort of two different cultures sometimes, but you just have to have mutual respect and full communication, clarity. Big words like clarity, communication and leadership. And I think it, yes. it all boils down to leadership and communication. 100%. What happened in the pandemic? I mean, I've been thinking of you for a long time, wanted to invite you on the podcast. And I don't know, now we're here. We want to hear how is that for you? And what have you learned? What highlights and low points are there at the moment with the restaurant business? Big question. A lot has happened. When everything first hit, I even thought, will my business come back? Because I focus on this industry and I saw so many places just being so hard hit. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting because I reached out to everybody I knew and I didn't really get a response. So I was like, what's happening? I think there was just a lot of, after I started speaking to people, I mean, people were just devastated, completely emotionally and financially devastated when they had to shut their business for that long. And the people that did an honorable job, meaning continuing to pay their purveyors, continuing to pay for their rent, continuing to try to Get, send something to their teams, they had an almost harder time because they're used to having money come in and, and paying and doing the right thing. And all of a sudden that all stopped. So it became very, very hard. And mm -hmm. then all these options came. So you can do a PPP loan, but can you? And then you've got to think in the future in a way that you haven't, like, will we be able to rehire everybody and use the money and do the right things so that we can get the PPP forgiveness. And mm -hmm. then they change the rules. I mean, that I think was probably one of the hardest things is that mm -hmm. it was moment by moment experience for everybody. And you couldn't make any plans and you couldn't rely on information because you knew it would change. It was one of these things where I'd, I want to get a loan, but should I try to get a loan? I saw what happened last time, dot, dot, dot. It's been very, very difficult for a lot of operators in terms of managing their finances and, and trying to still impact both their customers and their teams. That's been very, very difficult. But what I've also seen, I actually did a panel discussion yesterday about this, is I've seen a lot of brands also pivot quickly and then excel during mm -hmm. this time. And that's been very exciting to see, mm -hmm. whether it's that multi-unit operator that has focused, if they have, let's say, eight locations, they decide to close three. Now they're focusing on five and maybe the other three are becoming production kitchens mm. that are helping them do their takeaway business in those open businesses. I've also seen people do really well making their business almost entirely pick up delivery and then even mm. national delivery with things like Gold Belly, if you're familiar with them. It's a cool platform. It basically highlights restaurants in all sorts of cities And it's sort of like the best of the city. They, you know, you can get all sorts of interesting food items from New York City or from Philadelphia or from Miami, whatever it might be, but you can ship it nationally. Mm. So that's really great for some, some of these smaller but beloved restaurant brands because they can then send things 
on a national level. I, I have a friend and colleague who runs a pizza concept and they're doing incredible numbers just on Gold Belly, basically freezing their pizzas and sending them. And it's been an incredible help to their business. And then little things like I have had some clients that when they couldn't do indoor dining anymore, that became an opportunity to actually do more takeaway. Because with takeaway, what you need is space to set up your orders, to prep out the boxes, to prep the bags, to make sure that everything is organized. And very often the takeaway is a smaller part of your business because you don't have room for it. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. And it, most people want to come in, dine in. So in this case, when the, you have all this dining room space, they're able to almost make it like a factory and they can turn out more mm-hmm. orders than ever before doing everything delivery. I've seen people do some cool things during this yeah. time. They've been surprising and, and exciting. It's like, yeah. oh, that's how you do it. That's how you pivot. That's how you continue to your brand a lot. I think this is fantastic. And you said it like pivot, but it's you have to adapt at the spur of the moment. You have to be very creative. And what I said to one of my clients is like, now is the time to be a disruptor. We were yeah. talking about something. We need to implement new processes. And I'm like, now do it. Because now people are open to say, now is the time to change. And you have to take on the leadership. It's always inspiring to talk to you and listening to what can happen behind the scenes. I love to go to restaurants, try different food, but there is a lot of work behind the scenes. And now is the time to disrupt and do something different. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Take it from the Iron Woman. We have episodes every Monday, every Wednesday. Don't miss out. There's something for everybody. And Take It From The Iron Woman actually started out as a book for global business coaching with sports parallels. You can follow my story from Switzerland to New York to Kilimanjaro. There's something for everybody. Thank you so much. And please subscribe to your preferred platform. Leave a review and like us. See you next time.